Hello everybody, welcome to my new live stream where we are creating an entire game in C from scratch. You can see the whole process ever, ever from the first ever line of code all the way through the gameplay and the engine and the rendering and the audio, all sorts of crazy stuff, all the way to the final game, I hope, and uh, its release. Uh, let me show you how the game is so far because it's coming along, it's coming along pretty nicely. So, uh, uh, well, okay, so <laughs> we changed the controls last time to help debugging and apparently we kind of broke the game, so the lock mouse, well, okay, that was weird because the mouse wasn't locked, okay, that's my life. I, th I think I, I haven't, I didn't uh, compile it last time. So, <laughs> back to normal. We are creating this game, which starts off as a breakout clone, but then I started creating cool things like, first idea was to add some power-ups, so, yeah. So we already started implementing some interesting ideas. But the, the major idea of the game that I played around with was having uh, different arcade games as Breakout. So here we have Prom Breakout. Oh. Actually, yeah. And we have Space Invaders Breakout. Okay, and in the past few streams, we've been uh, improving the game engine to support kind of uh, the final pass of gameplay. Because if you guys remember, from the first uh, from the first ever stream, we kind of uh, we kind of uh, explained the plan, and we are coming far along it pretty well. So first of all, we did like a small engine to get started. We did that in a couple in the first couple of days. Then we did like first gameplay pass and both both of those are okay and then we we are almost done with the like engine improvements to support final gameplay and we are almost done with that we're gonna finish that today hopefully and then we can do like uh, gameplay Craziness. Then we can do like a polish pass. Polish on both the game and the engine. So we are almost done with that. If you go to the YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash danzaydan, you can see uh, that in the, the last few streams we did like implemented rotated rectangles for our graphics, and we also did like a particle systems before that. And we did bitmaps and a subpixel rendering and we added audio and mixer and we also added parallel programming we made it a job system so we can make not only the audio parallel which we already did last time but uh, maybe the rendering in the polish pass things like that and just a quick note i have been i have been uploading these uh, highlights videos because uh, well the streams can get pretty long like two and a half hours four hours two hours three three hours and uh if you want to get like the basic idea and they're like the best moments, so to speak, you can just watch the highlights. And you can also download the full game and the source code on HIO. So if you come here to the HIO page, which is danzaden.h.io, you can see there are a couple of cool GIFs. And uh, you can just come here and download every day uh, the executable and the source code. You can come from every the first day that we wrote, like started out with pretty much uh, not much of a game, right? All the way to what we have now so that's the basic plan we're going to finish the engine improvements and we should do the last thing we have to do in the engine improvements in this pass is the save system so that's what i'm build today and there are also some things that i want to do because uh i started out uh i started creating the music for the game and i'm going to show you guys because the last music that we, we played uh this music that i did uh implemented last time around that was for my old game 
that I, I had also created, but this one I think is a lot cooler. So I'm gonna play it for you guys. And uh, maybe you can guys can tell me what you think. Rachel says I like it, thanks! Uh, I'm still very much learning about you know making music and composing and things like that. But uh, I also liked it, so I'm glad you did. So the challenge for today is a lot. Actually, I made a couple notes. So first thing, uh, these are some of the ideas that I want to implement in the other gameplay pass. These are the games that I want to at least try to do in uh, breakout mode. And there are also a few bugs that I found by uh, just playing the game and I was also want to implement things like a, a pause system for dev we're gonna do that today and then we're gonna finish the engine by doing the save system which we're gonna save the high score and the unlock levels and then maybe if we do that quick enough we can do the sound effects because I have also like downloaded and organized a lot of sound effects here so we have brick sound effects yeah and a comet sound effect. It's kind of weird, I don't know. Fireworks. Force field. Things like game over. And hits. And I, I got a lot of them, and they increase pitch. And that actually matches the the sound uh, the scale of the music. Clone style, hey man, how are you doing? Uh, so I think by adding that we can some pretty cool things as well as like power ups and power downs and our sign yeah spring <laughs> that's gonna be fun so hopefully gonna get to implement those today so this is the basic plan let me just open for coder uh, so the engine improvements is the last thing that we need uh, to do for the engine which is the save system and I'm gonna have also going to fix those crashes. Oh, oh not crashes, like the bugs that I found out. Okay, and then maybe we can go back and do like the gameplay ideas. Okay. So, uh, how's it going for you? It's going doing great, man. Uh, hopefully, have a beginning a, a beginning of a nice week, and hopefully, it's gonna be great uh, for you as well. For me, it's been doing pretty. Pretty well. Uh, okay, so there was a bug that uh, I'm, I, it was kind of hard to to get get to happen again. When I was pretty much done with this level, when I was uh, when I finished uh, playing it, there were like I don't know like three blocks remaining, and one of them wouldn't get destroyed. Like I really hit it, hit it, and the ball like reflected off it, but it didn't get destroyed. So I was like, okay, that's a weird bug. Let me try to understand it a little bit more. And it turns out that when I destroyed the other two blocks, I won the level. So I was like, okay, this is weird. So I investigated a little, a little bit, but I wanted to fix it on stream. And the problem was the do, uh, do ball collision test. So this guy, if we hit uh, the ball on a block, right? we will lose a life and then we may be called destroyed and things like that however this is called inside a loop and uh because we can have more than one ball right and the problem was i hit that block with two balls at the same time at the same frame so one ball said okay uh removed one life and the other block also removed one life so when i compared the block's life to, to zero, uh, well, not sure where I compared it to zero, let me see, yeah, like this, if not block life, uh, the life got to, 
I got to minus one, right? So what effect, what I'm going to do, instead of just changing this if, I'm going to assert that this guy is greater than zero. And that, that case would crash, right? The, the bug that I found out. So we're going to have to fix that. And in order to fix that, like, if in the do ball, in this case, if we were destroyed, which that's going to return, I'm just going to break out of this loop. So I don't need to do that again, because I was destroyed. So that will solve that bug. And uh, we're going to have to to work a little bit more on the return value of this guy, because it does return a bool 32, but I return if it collided. What we're actually going to return is that uh, if it was destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Now we should have the same thing, but that case, which is hard to reproduce, shouldn't be problematic. Yeah, so apparently everything is how it was. So let's see if that'll, I'll fix it. Okay, now, uh, yeah, don't test collision with the other balls if one ball is right, that's what we did. And uh, another thing that I don't know where it happened, I think was in the, when we fixed the recenter, the pawn guy shouldn't be touching the top of the screen because that way we can't get the ball behind him. So all I'm going to do really quickly is just to like change, let's see, yeah, change the Y offset. Y offset. which is like relative spacing, x and y offset. So, so this guy has to do like minus 25 to make it, uh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Not only is it a bit harder, but it's easier to get the ball behind him. Maybe, uh, maybe minus 30, which is no, kind of a, what breakouts is about, right? Uh, I'm gonna turn audio off for you guys, just so it won't bother you uh, until we go and implement. Yeah, this is a little bit better. Let me try to get the ball behind it, and uh, because it's challenging enough, but it's also uh, I don't know, not like impossible, right? That's true. Well, it may be pretty hard, so let's do like if we can play around with that. I just want to do do a little bit of that. And I'm also going to do, in the first level, I'm also going to throw the blocks a little bit down as well. Uh, add a little bit of Y offset as well, like maybe, maybe 3. Just so it's a little bit easier, yeah, to get, to get a go. Yeah. Okay, now, these are our small gameplay changes. We're going to do a lot of uh, more gameplay stuff. That was, however, a pixel crash. Uh, at some point, I was playing the game, and, I, I, and it's hard to, to, to reproduce things like that, so when it happened, I kind of had to investigate that for a bit. Uh, I was playing the game, I don't remember which level that was, but at some point I crashed. And I was like, what? So I investigated a little bit, and I found out that our, our we have a typo in our rendering. Uh, yeah, it was the min and max bounds, like here, here uh, uh, yeah, in the transparent rotated rect, here, we're using the width for all of those, and uh, this is like wrong, so x, I'm going to clamp that to 0, and the width, and the max I'm going to clamp from zero to the height. So that was an annoying crash. Okay, and let's just try to see if there's if there are any improper use of like width and height. So width and height. Uh, yep. 
Yeah, this is correct. What about the height? Okay. Let's see, height. Okay. Okay, this is what we fixed. Um, yeah. Okay, so apparently that was the only problem. Nice. Uh, another thing I wanted to add for the game was in the development mode, a uh, a pause button. Because sometimes when, you know, especially because we locked our, the mouse, as you can see, like, oh, you can't see because of my because of my head, my head's on the way. But we locked, see, it's trying to escape there, my head. <laughs> we locked the mouse, so uh, we could get, like, proper wrapping in, in, uh, when we got slowed down or... Uh, in uh, different cases, right? But it's hard for us to, you know, come here and pause. Things like that. So what I'm going to do in just the debug case, I'm going to do like a key that, let's see, will not simulate the game. I think that's the only thing that I want to stop doing. So like if do we have the development? I don't think we do. Yeah, we do. We can do the service. Okay, so if you are developing, we are going to test like if Win32 paused. So if you are not paused, we update the game. I mean, yeah, we don't need to, to get that, but we are going to change this case. So let's do a if development and uh, let's see what key should we bind to pause and let's do like f f1 we do 32 pause equals true. Well let's just toggle that and then We'll do a win32 pause equals false. Yeah, we'll call that paused. Okay. Well, if I could type, okay. Let's see, so we're playing, then I press F1. Okay, so this is, uh, if, yeah, if we press F1 and the button is down, and is down is different from was down. Okay, only when you press. Nice. So in this case, in, in, no, in fact, I'm also going to toggle the lock, or let's say like if um, mouse lock, let's see the lock mouse, what is it called? Win32 lock mouse. I'd say, well, if we are paused, We are paused. Well, maybe I'll, I'll just toggle that as well. So, yeah, lock mouse. Okay, so we're going to free the mouse and we're going to be able to. Okay, so now we can do all sorts of stuff like increase the size, decrease it, and then we can go back. Awesome. So, this will help debugging when we get to problems like that. So we can uh, pause, inspect, and things like that. That, that was that was pretty easy. And that was pretty cool. So now let's go. Let's do the last thing we we need to do to improve our engine, which is a save system for our game, because we have the high scores, and we wish to save that. And we also should do like a a a lock a lock. Uh, 
a locked level kind of system, right? So there, there'll be a main menu and then be able to select levels. We could also do that. Yeah, let's do like the first version of the main menu. Uh, it's going to be pretty bad at first, but uh, I don't know. Everything starts pretty bad, so I'm going to create a menu dot C in the simulate uh, let's see update game so we have all sorts of crazy stuff going on here and uh, I am going to do the player movement in both because the way you control the menu will be with the player I think that'll be interesting. So I think just from everything from down here, like simulate the level, and the update the ball. Yeah, everything from down here I'm going to do later on. Maybe I'll keep the draw messages. Uh, I think I'm just, just going to delete this guy. Well, I'm not going to delete that yet. And uh, yeah, everything from here I'm go also going to delete, but the player render I'm going to keep. So, in the comment in strong blocks and advanced level, in the player life, and the draw score. So, this would be like simulate menu. Let's do like update. Menu and I'll pass the DT. Okay. And uh, yeah, and this guy is going to be like, if uh, let's call that game mode. I love watching your thought process in this game engine progress. It's really helpful. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, the idea is to to sh show the whole thing. You know, even as starting the small stuff like making a window appear, which was the first episode, all the way through my complicated stuff like. We did threading last time, that was pretty tough. Uh, oh, not too hard though, but that was pretty hard. And uh, things like that. So I try to talk a lot about what I think to help you guys. Because that's not a very complicated game, so I think you guys can follow along as well. You can go to the HIO page and like download the source code whenever you feel you want to follow along. And maybe you're going to try uh, your own game with that. That will be pretty cool. Because there are awesome series like this one, but... It's usually a huge game, so it doesn't get finished like ever. And we are, we are, I'm, I'm already seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So let's call that game, game, I don't know if game mode, that's, that's the best idea. Maybe game, maybe game state. Let's say game mode equals gameplay. Okay, and I'm going to create a uh, game mode kind of stuff, so. Game play and uh, menu. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a game mode, which is game mode. And then in the initialized, I'm going to set, I'm not going to do start game. I'm not gonna do that. But I am going to load stuff, but I'm going to set the game mode to menu. Okay, now let's do the menu update. ET. And all I'm going to do, like, if pressed up, uh, let's change the game mode to gameplay. Okay. And we are also going to, you know, take these guys out as well. But uh, one step at a time. So input. Yeah, I'm going to also have to take the input.
Okay, now let's see what we have. <laughs> wow. That's like some abstract art stuff. <laughs> we are not rendering. Um, let's, let's render. Like clear. I think I'm just going to clear the screen with black. To have like the old school feel. <clears throat> okay, but uh, the player is all wrong. I am guessing the, the update's not being done here, so the desired P. And then we do the renderer. Hmm. Okay, that's weird. Let's see. Oh, I guess these guys are not being set like the invincibility. Um, I, hmm. Well, let's try to do the uh, when we initialize. Let Let's try doing the start game. Even though we're not going to use it, yeah. So we we had like initial un initialize variables, things like that. Okay, so this will be an opportunity for the player to get uh, used to the controllers, and then also be the title screens, things like that. So what I'm going to do here? Oh, that's that's right. We can get to the gameplay. Yeah, but if I remove this invincibility cheat. Okay, nice. Now, let's do the proper uh, levels though. So, we have, let's see, we're going to create now the levels.c file. Levels.c. And I'm going to like copy a whole bunch of stuff. Like, all that arena stuff, the ball destroyed stuff, the ball, particle, the pl uh, maybe not the player stuff. Yeah, well, let's not do the player stuff. And then let's do like the score, touchless bonus, touchless bonus. <laughs> that was a really bad name. The block, the power up stuff. Um, the arena, current level, bitmap's gonna keep, well, maybe current level I'm also going to keep. Well, now let's, let's take that. Okay, now, uh, spawn particle, increase ball size, let's, let's move all that stuff. Test wind condition, block destroyed, do ball block collision, calculate neighbors, Space Invader stuff, reset power, init ball, start game. Yeah. Lose life, simulate level, simulate block for level, and we're gonna keep update game. Okay, so we moved like most of the stuff. Then we're gonna think about moving what's inside simulate game. But uh levels and I'm probably going to do that after the player okay this is a little bit more organized now what we can do is in the well in the menu I should have like the level info yeah so let's go to the menu and let's also come here so what I'm going to do is like for uh, each level, I'm going to draw, let's say, just a number for now. So I'm going to do like draw number. 
I and let's see. What it takes. So a P, we'll, we'll do the position. Size, that's still a pretty big number. Color, let's do white. Or let's do gray. And the selected one will be white. Number of leading zeros, no leading zeros needed. P. So the P, we start off as being, uh, let's say, zero. Uh, well, we're going to have to tune that a lot. But then we'll do like PX. We don't see anything. Now let's do like one. Yeah. Um, we should do the clean screen first. Uh, well. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, do the draw number return the spacing? Yeah, the new PY. Let's do that. Oh, PX, I suppose. Yeah, the PX. Then let's start off like minus this guy. Yeah, well. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Let's just implement that by hand. We're gonna do like the level name later on. So, yeah. Let's have a little bit more spacing. Maybe things like that. Okay, now. The idea is we're going to select the level with our guide. So, in fact, let me think. I'm going to do a, like a little bit more generic thing. So, we're going to do like um, uh, like first P. And then we're going to do like the delta p. Okay, and the first, let's say it's always minus 60. And the delta, I want to go like 120 units divided by the L count. Let's see. Well, probably, probably going to be like this guy minus 60, right? So it's going to be like. Well, 120 divided by L plus 1, I suppose. Because L doesn't count. So I think it's going to be either plus or minus. Let's see, yeah, it's going to be minus 1. Okay. So this is what we want. Now we can now refer to our position in a more uh, programmable way. Let's say like hot level it's going to be the player uh, visual p dot x right so let's let's draw that uh, let's say minus 60 i don't know let's do like minus 30 0 30. let's say we are 20. Okay, so first thing we need to do is maybe divide our position. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, we're going to subtract. No, I was just yeah, just going to divide that by the, the let's call that uh, range. And then we'll divide that by the range. I think that's it. 
Um, unless you like, if hot uh, I equals hot level, then we'll draw, draw it as a white guy. Okay, and then, well, we're just, just going to do just a cold cast. Okay, not working particularly well. Let's take this out and uh, let's just print the hot light. Okay, we're just zero. And uh, for some reason, we broke. We broke the. We broke what we had before. Oh, oh yeah, this, this guy. Okay. okay, now our hot guy didn't calculate it properly. Let's say in this case, if we are doing like 20 divided by. Well, yeah, that was wrong. We don't want to do that. We want to do this guy? How much is this guy? Like six? No, this is wrong. Oh, we actually go, yeah, I'm sorry. We have to divide by the del delta p. Let's see, delta p in this case is 30, so it's going to be 20 divided by 30. No, it should be, uh, oh, let's do it like this. If we are on minus 60, we want to get 0. Right? So we should do like minus 60 plus 60. We broke what we had before. Programming in a nutshell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's part of the challenge, right? I mean, can you build? How much can you build before that becomes too complicated? And when it, when it does get to that point, we should really do what we're starting to do now, which is like making things in a different file, making it easier to understand, things like that. Uh, <laughs> the nice one. Okay. I'm not sure the math behind this. Let's, let's do like one more time. Let's do it the other way. If we are at position 2, we're going to do like 2 times the delta time, uh, the delta, let's say it's 30, yeah, plus this guy, plus the first p, yeah, okay, equals p. So what we need is, well, it's like the index, and this is like the delta. So now let's separate the index from the other guys. So I'm going to I'm going to do index times delta. Index times delta will be p minus f p divided by divided by the delta. Okay. So hopefully that'll work. So it'll be p uh, which is like the player visual p minus the other p uh, minus the first p divided by the delta. Okay, and then we can get an integer out of that. So yeah, sometimes you just have to sit down and work the math. One, two, three. Okay, I think that's working, but uh, only when you go past the level. So instead of offsetting, I'm just going to. Uh, Offset that by half uh, of the delta p. Okay, that was wrong. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, this guy has to be offset by half of the delta. Okay, zero. Uh, yeah, actually. Okay, zero, one, two, three. Yeah, that looks perfect. 
And let's just, for our ease of conscience, let's assert that a hot level is greater to or equal than zero, and it's also less than L count. Now we can start selecting stuff. <laughs> Dude, how cool is that main menu? Oh, crap. So, hmm. <laughs> I think I'm just going to clamp instead of asserting that. Because, I don't know. Yeah, there may be some like crazy mouse movement that the player can do. And we, we don't really care. I mean, as long as we don't go past. Okay? Awesome. Now, how should we make him select? Because the only interaction we have is with uh, the ball. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a great menu. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, the only interaction I think... Maybe we can do like the old breakout thing that uh, he starts out with a ball attached to him, but that's kind of ugly. Let's just do a mouse click. Maybe shoot the level you want. You mean like have the ball interact like this? Like having the ball <laughs> like drop and then have to... Well, <laughs> I think that would be really inconvenient for the player because maybe he'll get the wrong one or maybe he just wants to quickly get to the to the other point. So I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to use the mouse click for now and we're going to keep that on the back of our uh, minds, let's see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let, me th uh, let me think about the mouse click. Well, I think I'm just going to steal the mouse click from another project because it's not really that interesting. Let's do like click. This code's really bad, by the way. Let's do like mouse. Hold mouse is down. I don't think this guy does click, does it? I know, it's kind of confusing. Uh, let me see. Well, let's just search for that. Um, get the. Uh, Let's do MSDN left mouse. I think it's just an event. Oh, that's not what I want. L button down. Yeah, it's a window event. Okay. Well, while the cursor is in the client area of the window. Hmm. I don't think we'll capture that. You know what, since I'm not going to spend too much time with that for now, let's just do like the... Let's just do the up key. Start game. Well, let's do set, set of current. Um, level to the hot level, and then let's do start game with current level, and then okay. So let's see if we start level two. We do. Let's see if we start level three. We do. Yeah, I want to do. I think the mouse click would be a nice one. We should also work on a transition, probably transition. Okay, but now let's do some more interesting things with that. First of all, let's, uh, yeah, see the mouse click. Well, I'm assuming you're going to play full screen. But for now, if the window is offset from the center, that's kind of bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to fix that real, really quickly. Stuff like, uh, Lock mouse instead of 
setting to the center of the screen. I think I'm going to do the center of the window. Get window wrecked. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Mm, okay. I'm going to do it like this. So. Yeah. Now we're always centered. Yeah. Okay. So now we can do the this guy, the left button down. Uh, message. Let's do it here in the input. Okay. Now. Let me print uh, just something here just to make sure that we only get that when you click. Yeah. So we can pretty much like the platform common do like button left mouse button and then we set the button and say input dot uh let's go 32 input dot buttons button left mouse button dot is down equals true and the changed also equals true and then when we do the button up do that like this okay now let's go back and do if we press we should really do like Maybe we should do after this guy, just because we may change in this frame, but who really cares? And let's do button F mouse button. Let's see if we get the mouse button. Okay, okay, perfect. Nice. Uh, now it kind of became a priority to, <laughs> to hide the mouse cursor. Now that it's in the middle of the game. Let's try and do that pretty quickly. I don't know, because we can do like set cursor and pass zero. But I don't think that'll be enough. Well, well that's enough. <laughs> that was easy. And uh, in our debugging pause guy, let's set the cursor to, I don't know, I see arrow. Let's do set cursor in the end. What can we pass? We we'll have to load the cursor. Well, that kind of sucks, but let's do it just for debug purposes. Cursor, then here we'll do H, what is that? H cursor load. Cursor. Yeah. Okay. Um, H icon. No variable declared before. What? Compatible type. Okay. Yeah. I have to pass the instance. Do we have what we call the instance? The Windows name, just like this. Okay. Okay, that was a very weird error message. But let's see. If we pause the game, well, we, we don't precisely get the mouse cursor. Hmm. Set 
cursor to zero like if it's not paused. But I don't think that'll change much. Let's, let's see. Well, if we are not paused. Yeah, you know what? Since it's just deep uh, debug code, I'm gonna say that's good enough for now. I think it is show cursor. Oh, and pass a bool. Mm, I think you are right. Show cursor. Let's see. Thanks for the tip. Um, yeah. Mm, that's awesome. Uh, they like three. So I suppose uh, the other one that we did, which was set cursor, maybe we could just do show cursor here as well. Yeah, well, we should, well, maybe if we do show cursor here. Okay, we don't see, yeah. I don't know why we don't see that when we press F1. See, I just press F1. So I have to move the mouse up and then when I go down. But I don't know, that's not really a problem. But, uh, well, thanks anyway. But, uh, well, we got what we wanted, basically, right? So, pretty good. Now, we have our menu. Now, let's do what we came here for, which is our uh, save system. So, I'm going to create, maybe here, I'll do like a, a level info. And all I have now is like block, uh, locked and a, a high score. I already have a level info. I'll do like a level, a level save. Okay. Yeah. And right here, well, maybe I'll do like this. Here, I'll do an array of level counts, we call that level saves, okay, and in the initialize, I like load save, but the first one will always be true, so we can do like level saves at the first level position dot blocked, uh, locked equals false, well, they should all be true, right? So load save. Uh, let's just initialize it. Recount level saves I plus plus. And let's do the level. Yeah, well let's just do it like this. Level saves I uh, I dot locked. It's going to be Maybe we should do it like the other way around just so we get the initialized version. But okay, now in the menu, oh, we should really. Uh, okay, so we should probably have this guy declared before everything. Like this. Okay. In the menu, uh, Let's go for each level, okay, like, and if level saves a uh, lot, so if the level is locked, else, okay, if it's locked, let's do like a very dark gray. Nice. Nice. So, um, we also create like non existing functions. Like, this is really problematic. I wanted the lab, maybe I'll have to create like a header file because I, I, I don't really like those. I wanted, hmm, now let's just keep going. Uh, I'm going to create an internal 
void which is like load save internal void save 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 load let's say load game let's say save game okay and uh, next now whenever we win like the level test win condition uh, win victory we're going to set to advance and we're going to set the level saves see we need the level saves at this point mm. at our current level plus one well, I have to have to cap that. Yeah. Um, I always do if current level is less than count minus one. So if you're not in the last level, we're going to set the next one to not locked. Then we're going to save. Yeah. Maybe this guy I declare up here. And then, yeah, I think I'm going to do it like this. So I kind of don't de uh, declare the levels, which levels exist inside the levels file, but I don't know if that's big of a problem. Uh, that big of a problem. So let's do it like this. When I uh, press the Ask key instead of uh, going back to the game. Uh, well, instead of leaving the game, let's go back to the menu. Platform common, let's add the button escape. Then here, let's do the process. Process button. Let's process the. It's called escape key button ask for escape and instead of closing the game maybe we should uh, yeah I don't know instead of closing the game I'm going to um, go back to the menu so if game mode as test if we pressed the S key if we press the S key I'm gonna set the game mode to menu But maybe I want to test up here. So if I press the S key, I'm going to see if this guy is the gameplay. I set it to the menu. Else, I'll quit the game. So running false. OK, so S should quit. Now S should go back to the menu. Perfect. Now, I you know what? <laughs> Pretty cool. So uh, I removed that cheat. Let, let me put it back. The the uh, invincibility cheat. Just so I can you know finish this level quickly. Uh, and uh, okay, so that didn't work. If I press down, I increase. Yeah, the DT can't go like times ten anymore. And let's also remove this guy. DT can't 
can go all crazy. Like, well, yeah, the player, the player kind of disappears. Mm. So let's do like if right uh, pressed button right. What is the uh, test from condition? Blocks destroyed. Wow. Okay. So if you press right now, we should win. Well, I didn't win. It's gonna take a while to be used to pressing twice at the escape key. If I press the right key, blocks destroyed equals the number of blocks. Well, it should really be minus one. Because we're testing if it's exactly like that. Okay. Okay, now if I go back to the menu, the level one is available and you can go like play one again okay now let's just save the high score okay so whenever we start game um, what I'm going to do is set the current games high score to the high score hmm Maybe I should just do like a uh, save high score call and I'll do like the level saves at the current level dot high score is going to be equal to the uh, score. But you know, only if score is greater than this guy. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, high scores. What high score? Okay. Now, um, when do we need to save the high score? Well, first of all, when we go, and we should probably also set the score to zero. And uh, whenever we go back to the menu. We should save the high score. Yeah, in fact, I'm not going to put this guy there. I'm gonna put him like here. And uh, whenever I save the high score, I'm going to no. Okay, and uh, whenever I ever I win, so. Test for win condition. Whenever I win, before saving the game, I'm going to save high score. Well, let's call that maybe save high score. Maybe maybe update high score. Do the Jonathan Blow notation of maybe doing stuff. <laughs> uh, Maybe destroy, uh, no, not maybe destroy neighbors. Maybe update high score. Okay, and let's also, well, we don't have the score. Score. Make sure you put that near the player. We don't have current level. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll just keep it there. Like, yeah. Hmm. 
maybe it's gonna be here. Mm. Okay. Now instead of saving high score, I'm gonna do like maybe update high score. If we go back to the menu, or if we close the game. Not sure what we should do. If, oh, in this case, we should. We don't care. But if we close the game with the all that four, we should probably. I don't know if we should save or not. I don't know. Maybe save. Let's. Let's save. Think about that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I want to do that, but let's not do it now. But that's. Also, write a note like the polish pass. Engine flip point colors, save when quit. Because we can do like in you know, a window event. I think that'll be better. But I'm not sure if we want to do that though. The last thing we want is like. Yeah, I don't know. Let's cross that bridge when we get to it. So, uh, we. Let's also do when we lose like game over. Uh, lose life. Okay, so we set this. We uh, maybe late high score. And this guy should return whether or not we updated the high score, so we can do like something like this. Yeah, high score. Let's see where, where are we calling it. So, in this case, we can always save because we updated the other one. Well, not really. Um, yeah, let, let's do this optimization thing. Let's save game. And, uh,. In this case, let's say if this guy is locked, we are not going to lock it anymore, and then we're going to say save game it goes true. And if this guy or save game, we should say well save game is not uh, Let's call that should save game. So should I save the game? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Uh, I think we are in a good point. Let's just uh, in the load. We can do like. Load. Load save. Load game. As you like one for loading and zero for saving because we don't have like print characters. One, so we load. Let's see if we save. Well, we didn't save. And we press N. Okay, yeah. We press when maybe if we update we should save game. Okay. Let's see. One. Let's see. Three. Zero. Nice. Now if I only get like three again, I should and I don't. 
Okay, now if I if I go back, okay, I saved the game. It's nice. Now all we have to do is actually save the game and load the game. Okay. Uh, all I'm gonna do is a save like an array of these guys. But I'm gonna save like the array count, the level count, and the array. Maybe I should I should do like a version. Mm -hmm. Not sure if I if I want to do something like yeah I'll do a hardcore thing so uh, let's first add we have the OS read entire file let's do an internal OS write entire file and. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Just to make our lives easier, let's make it like struct save game, uh, save data, and let's do like levels save. Let's call that levels. And let's do a save. Data. And now we're going to do like a version. Okay, yeah. So whenever we see level saves, we're going to do save data dot levels. Let's see. Yeah. So save data levels. Uh, okay. Save data dot levels. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Save ah. Uh, save data dot levels. Okay. Redefinition. Um, okay. Now, we're gonna take a. A string which is a pointer and a size and uh, it's the same thing that we did instead of calling read file we want to call write file so and we need a handle or anything like that so this is the call we want to, we want to make uh, write file and it returns um, if succeeds, okay, so result equals this guy. Result false, okay. So we need a file handle. So we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. But uh, instead of generic read, we're gonna do a generic write. And a file path, I'm going to hard code data. Um, save dot breakout. I don't know. Uh, and uh, let's do the create file. Let's see. This guy. You want to do like, like zero probably. Security attribute zero. Create always. Create new only if does not already exist. Open always. Open system. Let's do create always. And uh, we pass. Uh, I don't think we need any flags or attributes. Okay. File path undeclared identifier. Well, I suppose that was wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, 
not here, I don't think. Okay, so now that we do have a handle, let's just call the file. So the buffer is going to be data dot data, and the number of bytes is going to cast the D word. It's going to be data dot size, and uh, the number of bytes written. So bytes written overlapped. Um, I don't think we care about that at all. Let's see if we can pass zero. Can be null. Okay. Okay, actually the result is going to be this. And the bytes written equals to data dot size. And I have to do like a bytes. Nice. Actually, I don't know if we should like hard code this or not. So instead of doing write entire file, I'm gonna do write save file. Just so the game doesn't worry about directory stuff. Because that's like a platform specific thing. If we want to uh, if you want to save like more kinds of files, like if you wanna save I don't know what we, what we would want to save, but uh, in any case, this will work for now. So th this is the, the right file. So let's do like the save game. In the save game, I'm going to build a string called that data. Data.data .data will be the address of save data. And data.size is going to be size of save data. Uh, save data. Okay, then we're gonna call that OS write save file and pass that to data. Okay, that's it, and uh, we we'll probably want to do that in parallel, like. Uh, And uh, the load is going to be pretty easy. Let's do like save version. So we're going to do the the uh, OS read entire file and you know let's let's also do like internal string OS read save file again just so the game doesn't worry about where the guys where, where the uh, where's the save happening like that because like in the PS4 you don't do you do that and the game don't want to change that so let's just just not worry about that at all so in this case I'm going to return the OS read entire file passing the data save dot breakout okay okay now let's add this guy to the platform common service okay and now we're going to read save file data and we're going to do the level well first of all if data dot size We're going to do let's do one step at a time. Let's do a version equals um, this guy, and if version is the same as save version, well, we should also set this guy really. 
this guy is the same, then we can read the whole state. So the level state is going to be equal to the same thing. So it's going to be a pointer to a level state. Yeah. Oh, it's save data. Okay. Now, whenever we load save load game, um, actually in this in this case, we should really set the save data dot version to the save. Version. Okay. Well, I think we are pretty much good to go if I haven't done anything wrong, which I probably did. Let's test these two guys. Let's go to the uh, save game, uh, save game, and load game. Okay. Now we'll try to load the game, and this will probably which well. So I suppose now it's okay to have invalid. Okay. We could also we could also test if it ex if it uh, if it uh, exists. Why did you create OS read save file if it doesn't call any OS specific functions directly? Well, the thing is, the game shouldn't have to worry about where the save lives. Because on Windows, you are saving at data slash save, right? But let's say on Linux, you want to save on that user's whatever folder it is. What if on PS4 we don't have like a save search like this and we have to do an entirely different thing for save? Because honestly, this call will not be called by the game. We're only doing this because we're, we're loading the resources like this directly. And that's not how we're going to do for the ship version of the game. Like the game shouldn't have to worry about that. All the game is going to do is like tell the operating system, load resources for me. And if they are like, if they are on this, uh, place is going to load from this place. If it's like from whatever else, like the cloud or whatever, it's going to do other things. If, if it has to decompress the data or load that asynchronously, whatever. In this case, since it's very simple, we could do this directly, but you use, uh, but you use double slash and update game, which isn't, yeah, you mean like this, right? Yes. This we're not going to do in the final game. This is just for us to load stuff quickly. And we're going to do more stuff. We're going to do like the, uh, the sound effects like this. But when we build our acid cooker, which is on the polish pass, we're going to build an acid cooker, which is going to be pretty cool, I think. We're not going to load that on the game. The game won't worry about the assets individually. Uh, all the game will worry about specifying what assets it's, it wants to use. And the OS can worry about how to load that. Because maybe we'll extract that from the executable file. Like in the other game, if I can show you, in the other game, the one that uh, it's on each IO, this game, this guy, the two handed pong game. Uh, let's see, crazy pong. The final version that I released is just the executable. All the files that it needs, like the, uh, the music and stuff, is inside the executable, packed. So, if the game calls like load data and the Windows managed to do this, it's going to unload from the executable. But let's say on the PS4 that doesn't happen. So, uh, it's going to be differently. So, I'm just preparing things to be more platform independent. This case, it's not, but uh, since it's just test code, we don't really care. But well, since it's a small game and uh, we're probably just going to release in a couple of platforms, I could probably do that here and just if def like if windows but uh yeah i'm just trying to make like clear uh starting to do to get an engine out of this game because this is like game development that's not engine development but hopefully we can do like some engine stuff after we do this game and then we'll extrapolate and do things more solid yeah 
I think that'll be good. So if I think I, I deleted the wrong thing here. No, this is correct. This guy should assert. And uh, yeah, this other guy won't. So I, hopefully that was clear. So let's see. What do we have? We're trying to load the game. And we probably didn't load anything because we don't have a load file. That's okay. No problem. And uh, let's see. If we start playing around. Uh, um, let's see. I complete this level. So the data that we want to save is... Let's just go back to the... Well, because it was correct. 36 bytes long. <laughs> and this is our memory. Should have like a 1 in the beginning. And then if it's blocked, it's not blocked. Then a high score of like 16. How do you handle Unicode? For we don't do Unicode yet. Uh, I don't think we will, honestly, for this game. Because that's not really <laughs> fun. And since it's a very small game and uh, we do like relative pass stuff because we use the Win32A. Yeah, we do use the Win32A. Because we don't we don't do like absolute paths for anyone. So we don't we don't have the risk of the user having a Unicode folder. Because since these are relative paths, there's no problem. And that Linux is Unicode by far. Yeah, but we don't really care about that. Uh, this is just uh, Windows stuff. So when we get to, to write the Linux platform C, uh, then we can do like full Unicode or whatever. In this case, we don't really care about that because this is like relative paths. But in like, like I said, in a full version of, the, of an engine, we should probably do like UTF-80 Unicode support. Like that. Okay, let's see if we write the file. That was pretty instantaneous, right? Because it's such a small file. And let's see. If we save, well, we did save, but we saved zero bytes. Hmm, that's not good. That's not very good. Let's let's go back to this breakpoint. Oh, did I save twice? Not sure. Uh, let's see. The file handle is invalid. Well, but that was only in the second time around, wasn't it? Let's see. Well, but what? I thought we, we managed to load something. Oh, because we didn't close the file handle. Yeah. Hmm. Did we close the file handle here? No, we didn't close the handle in the read as well. Hmm. That's a stupid mistake. Uh, in the read entire file, I'm going to close the render, uh, the, the handle. File handle. We should also close it like here. Because when we call write file, it doesn't actually write the file. But when we close the handle, it writes the file. So, mm. so it kind of worked, right? <laughs> but it kind of didn't at the same time. So let's say, um, okay. We're trying to save the game. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, we are we are doing it twice. Yeah. So uh, first of all, let's fix that problem in the levels save game. Okay. Now let's see. Wow! Now for some reason we don't we still have a cursor. So, save game. We're getting calls from here. That's perfect. And we're going to write the file. Let's see? And we do have a file. Nice. So now we can play the game as always. Then let's try going to the menu and it saves again. Okay. Uh, where's that? Okay, now let's try loading the data. Oh, and we probably zero the power ups when we go to the menu. Yeah. So now we have some data. The version is one, so it matches. And now we 
uh, let's see the save data, version 1, levels. The first level is unlocked, high score is 18, this guy is 15. This looks perfect, I think. Well, except for a couple things, which was the, uh, the power-ups should be... Uh, we have like reset power-ups. Like power... I think we have like a reset guy. Well, let's do like T equals zero. Reset power. We should call reset power whenever we... Uh, well, we do when we start the game. Whenever we change the game mode. Yeah. Which is like weird. Not sure I like this structure. But uh, maybe maybe you should have like an init menu. Yeah, I don't know. Like clean up. Probably. Okay. Now I don't think we're going to need to make that on another thread. Because that was super quick. Maybe, yeah, that was awesome. So, maybe we'll do that when we need to. Let's see. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel anything. But we, when we changed, I should, uh, when we start game, I should set the score to zero. When are we setting the score to zero? Only when I update the high score. Well, I should probably have changed this score to zero when I... Okay, now I did. Oh, because I went back? No. I'm not sure what happened. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. But, uh, anyways. In the menu, let's also show the high score. So, uh, if it's not locked, well, we should only save the high score if we succeed the level, not if we quit the level. That makes more sense, right? Okay. Uh, draw number. Uh, let's just if it's locked. If it's not locked. Yeah. Let's just draw the high score. Going to do like maybe this size, and uh, we're going to do. Save data levels i dot high score. Nice, but uh, well, let's do it like this: color equals one, two, three. Do like color, color. Color. Okay, and let's also do like sub p2, 2 of 0, and let's say 10, well, 5. Okay, well, should really be like I have p2, and let's do 7. We should make like a draw number. Uh, should make like a draw number from the center. Maybe we should just add leading zeros. Yeah, but the one's not centered. Yeah, let's not worry about that. But let's not save the high score if we quit the game. Like. Maybe update high score. If we if we go, yeah, maybe if we go from the game to the menu, shouldn't actually update the high score. And uh, let's also see uh, another case like update high score. Test for condition as okay. Lose a life. I'm not going to do that. Maybe update. Yeah. So. Should only try to update. Let me test for the win condition. That looks correct. 
Yeah, okay. So I think our safe system is done. So we start out with this guy. Zero because we haven't finished it. So I'd say we're going to play a little bit. And then succeed. I'd say we succeeded. Let's say 20, 31. Okay, so we're now in the next level. If you go back to the menu, 34. Oh, because we have the score. Yeah, this is kind of artificial because uh, this is just a hack to, to complete the level without actually playing the level. So let's not worry about that. So 34. Now, see, it's still 7. Yeah, because I'm not resetting the score. I'm set only when I try to update the high score, so this is the win condition. I should really do like in a lot of cases. Like in the win con uh, in the win condition. Like I'm gonna put it like victory. And uh, in fact, now that we're not using that anywhere else, no, that, let's keep it a function for now. But uh, okay, so whenever we win, whenever we lose, so game over. Also going to set the score to zero. And whenever we go back to the menu, so here we set the score to zero. Okay, I think that'll be better. Let's see. Oh, we should also see if the lives are okay. So, six went back. Yeah, perfect. Oh, because the start game. Start game, yeah. So, let's say. Okay. Um, let's just play for a bit. Nice. Oh, okay. Let's see, 479 of 480 something. Okay, let's go back. Hmm. Okay, so now we're not saving. <laughs> like Rachel said, right? The art of, you know, Having something work than not work. If we succeed, we go back to this guy. Maybe we should go back to the menu. But uh, we're not saving for some reason. Uh, maybe update my squad. Like, if the next one is locked, we unlock them. Then we said that we should save. If we are the last one, we're gonna set the game mode to the menu, or maybe like a like a I don't know special screen. Not a hundred percent sure. Uh, but yeah, why did we save the high score? I know, let's, let's put a breakpoint on maybe update my score. Let's see. Score is, oh, because we are zeroing that. Ah, uh, when? When we lose a life? Oh, when the victory should be like, at the very end. Oh. Let's see if we can like get a few points on this guy. And if we do manage to get this guy behind the other one, it's really awesome because the uh, movement will make it be like a, but it's kind of hard. Let's see. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna move him down even a little bit more. Okay, 13. Let's see. 
14, yeah. But if we just leave, we don't get an update. Yeah, 7, 3, 0, okay, perfect. Now, for some reason, we stopped. Oh, is when we all tapped? No. When do we lose our cursor thing? Yeah, it's when we all tab. Hmm. Dude, that's that's uh, that's the kind of a robustness thing that's kind of hard to do. Like, because there are so many cases, cursor like set cursor. I'm gonna do that on the activate app. I think we also, yeah, we already have an activate app to clear the input. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. And if we really love our users, which we don't, I'm kidding. <laughs> we should save like the old mouse peak. So that when we all tap, we change that back. Let me see. Yeah. If we are unlocking the mouse, I'm going to set cursor pause. To the old position. So if he's like all tabbing all the time, we don't change his mouse. Um yeah, we, in this case, where we are unlocking, we unlock the mouse, then we set to like Win32 saved mouse. So now let's do like. Uh, center screen. Yeah, whenever we set the position, like cursor pause, which are in these three cases. First of all, I'm going to get the cursor pause. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to worry about that for now. I'm going to put that as a to-do. Just because this is kind of... A, this is the kind of stuff that... It's... have a lot of corner cases. Oh, I don't even remember what I just created. And uh, I don't want to deal with those corner cases now. I want to add some audio. But uh, well, let's do set the size to zero. Center screen. Just make sure we delete the variable, and we did. Okay, so we got to a perfect point. We finished our engine improvements, the fire writing system, save the unlocked levels and high scores. That's it. I'm just going to note uh, in a polish engine pass. Let's do like uh, maybe return the player's mouse cursor to where it was before. Or we set it. I know. Uh, oh yeah, we did implement a save system. Now, nice. Yeah, it was nice. Our engine is pretty much done in terms of features. Actually, it is done in terms of features. Uh, all the oh well, oh, not exactly because when we do the game modes, I think I may want to do. Uh, Rotated blocks, and since you, but we added rotated uh, rendering already, so that is done. But we don't have rotated collision, so we're probably gonna spend uh, some time doing that whenever we want to do the uh, the game mode that requires rotated blocks. Uh, but uh, that'll certainly not be now. So the engine, I'd say the engine is like nine percent, but 
the most of our stuff is done. So let's do the audio stuff that we want to do. We want to implement the music and sound effects, make the volume have a target volume, so you can fade things in and out easily, make the player uh, the listener, that would be pretty cool, I think, and make the async ODG reader. Hmm. Let's see, we are 1 hour and 46 minutes in. Let's try to do that today. I'm feeling excited. What do you guys think about? Let's do the whole thing. Then we can go back and just start making like UI stuff, better levels, more feel, cleanup. Well, kind of did the cleanup almost. It wasn't too nice, but it was sort of cleanup. Um, polish pass. That sounds perfect. What do you guys think? Let's do the audio now. But before I do the audio, let's do like a one minute break. <laughs> okay, I'm eager for more. Well, I'm gonna get some water. Maybe she got some water too. <laughs> but I don't know if you've been talking as much as I have. But when I go back in one minute, one minute, we'll do the audio stuff. So prepare your headphones. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Now, let's implement music and sound effects. First of all, let me put my earphones here. And I'm going to turn audio on for you guys as well. So, let's see what we have for audio. Right now, we are playing the, the other game. What framework? Dude, we're not using any framework. We are making a game from scratch. If you go to the YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Dan Zaydan, you can see the whole process. We started out with a blank file and just our courage. <laughs> and then we started doing like the window stuff, the graphics stuff with no libraries, and uh, all the way the gameplay. And then we did like rendering and particle systems and audio and threading and bitmaps and all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm going to drop that on the chat so you can uh, take a look later on. Uh, let me show you the state of the game now. The game, well, we just implemented a main menu, which is pretty cool. And uh, right now, the game, well, it's kind of a breakout kind of game. So it starts out as a pretty much a breakout, breakout clone. And this music that uh, you can hear, that I was looking at, <laughs> if you guys could hear. Uh, that music is my other game's music, so today I'm going to implement the actual music for the game. And then we can like finish the game and go to the other levels, like to like break out Space Invaders. So that's the kind of a, the cool idea of the game, is that you play other arc arcade games as breakouts. So that's the idea. And uh, we did like Space Invaders, which was the, the more interesting one. 
and uh, Pong. Uh, let's do Pong, which still has a lot of work to do. But uh, starting to get cool. The thing about Pong is that uh, you can't just do it like this. You just can't just stand uh, right. Well, even if I could, I couldn't because uh, he keeps dropping, you know, uh, power downs. And you want to avoid those. Yeah, so. So that's the game we have now, and it was all from scratch, and I think the main is going to be pretty cool. How long have I been using C? C specifically, it's been pretty much exactly one year. I have been using C++ for a little bit longer, but uh, not too long though. Why are we making a game in C and not C++? Well, this is a simple enough game that we don't need the C++ features, and I think C is a very I know it's a more beautiful language, to, for the lack of a better word. It's uh, way better because it's easier to see the code and understand it pretty easily. So you can know exactly what's going on. There's no like crazy features that we need to, oh, what's the compiler doing? And then crazy error messages. No complication like that. Pretty simple. It's the most simple language and simple and powerful. Yeah, so we need to be both. And I think C is both. So I think C is more fun. And since the goal of this game is just to have fun and make games and uh, not worry about too much, I'm just going to use C. For the next project, if I decide to make it a little bit bigger and, uh, yeah, maybe more complicated, use like OpenGL stuff, rendering and more stuff, maybe I'll do C++ because that's the industry standard and it's also nice to be really good at that. I started learning C this week. This feels great, but I have no idea what to do. And there's uh, like uh, no C tutorials on YouTube. Dude, there are a couple C tutorials. Uh, I mean, a pretty good one. Well, it's technically C++, but it's a very C-like C++. If you go to Handmade Hero, that's a great source for learning how to do engine development. And he goes like all the way to 3D and lighting and all those crazy stuff. Uh, his game is like really more advanced than mine. And he goes all the way through optimizations and that. He has an intro to C course. And uh, if, you, if you go to handmadehero.org and go to the intro to C, C here, you can watch those. Uh, it's only five days, so it's just an introduction, but it's really cool. And uh, it will give you all the tools that you need. It will be, kind of be a lot for the beginning. You'll have to practice that. But my series, I think that will be useful if you want to learn how to make games in C. Because if you go from the very first episode, uh, which is usually like slash Dan Day Dan, you can see all the code that we wrote and how we set to search for that to make a game. And you can download the source code to follow along too. So if you go to danzaden.h.io, you can uh, download the source code for each of the episodes separately. So if you do like the first day and then you download, then you play around with it, maybe add a little bit of gameplay yourself, do all, all, all sorts of stuff, all the way to where we are now. Uh, like I learned C like six years ago, it was a great introduction to understanding Fundamentals of programming, switched over to Python and Node.js though. Oh nice, even. Uh, yeah, so Hacker uh, linked a uh, YouTube video, let me check out. He says it was a great intro to C. Yeah. Oh, Harvard. Have nice. functionality. Printf still get. <laughs> okay, so he uses the <laughs> scratch as an example. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the problem. The fundamentals, there are a lot of uh, stuff on Google and YouTube about the fundamentals of programming, of C, of C++, of everything. But intermediate and advanced stuff, you really don't see. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this series, which is kind of an intermediate level. It's not like advanced, but it's not like super beginning either. So I think this feels a pretty cool gap. Handmade Hero is a little bit more advanced. Like if you go to the full one, to the full episodes, that's a little bit more advanced than my series. But uh, I really want to do like a whole from beginning to advanced series later on. Because there's a really lag. The way I learned intermediate stuff is doing challenges, projects, and stuff. Yeah, you do have to do uh, projects yourself. Well, even if you are doing like the beginning or the advanced stuff, you do have to, read, to do projects yourself. But it also helps, you know, to see people doing more advanced kind of stuff. And not just the, the very basics like pre-NF kind of stuff. And then switch into like a full working project, you know, that's, or like using a library that does all sorts of crazy stuff and you don't understand what the library does. That's why this game's from scratch. I mean, in the other games, when we got to, to when we maybe we're gonna use libraries, uh, 
we'll have an understanding of what the game does, like the whole thing. Okay, so yeah, those are a couple of uh, nice features. So let's do the, do audio. First thing, uh, let's let's change the music to our music, which is breakout main dot wave. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that kind of music. I don't know if you guys enjoyed that. I did this music and I, I'm kind of learning how to do music still. So maybe you guys are gonna feel like this is a pretty bad music. And maybe you can guys say why you think so <laughs> and then I can improve later on. But I really liked it the way it turned out. Yeah. Okay, nice. However, I did two pieces of music. I mean, it's the same one, but I also exported a mini version. Which doesn't have as many instruments. Yeah. And the idea is to have, you know, them play in the menu. So we're going to have to expand our audio system to do that sort of stuff. So, right now, if we do like main and menu, and we, let's do like gameplay, music and we do menu music equals this guy if we do like this and we do like gameplay music dot uh, arrow volume equals zero we should have like the audio music and let's see game play music and menu music Uh, what was this game called? Okay, nice. Yeah, breakout. Yeah. <laughs> Volume. Uh, okay, yeah, this actually should be in the play sound. So, I'm gonna play the music and let's do like loaded. Gameplay music and loaded menu music. And this will be the gameplay music. And this will be the menu music. Then we can turn the gameplay music volume to zero. Yeah, like this. Yeah, I'm learning C to ease me into C++ and C sharp. I probably won't touch it again. Yeah, C I think is a great language to learn because it's really not that complicated. Because all those other languages have tons and tons of features. And you really don't want to spend your time learning the language in the beginning. You should really learn how to program first. And then you can focus on the language. Uh, so, I really like it as a way to introduction. Yeah, I think it's like the best language to learn how to program. If you do like a simple high level language, though, you kind of miss some kind of uh, important things that uh, you kind of don't get when you are programming high level. And it's hard to go back and learn. It's easier to start learning that, I think. Loaded to gameplay music. In. Uh, okay, load it. And then I can have like a plain sound. But I know, I, I also thought that I wouldn't touch C again, but I fell in love with it pretty much. <laughs> so this guy is actually the loaded sound. Can't convert from loaded sound to loaded sound. That's a pointer. But that's okay, that should be a plain sound pointer as well. Okay. But if you're learning C and C plus plus you are unlearning all this stuff. Well, what do you mean? If you're learning C and then C++, C++ you just have to learn more stuff, like object-oriented programming, and uh, I don't know, there's a ton of stuff. 
like typecast conversion. Uh, I'm not sure. You're going to use like static cast like this for some cases, and then you're going to learn new casts. So yeah, and there are so few elements in C programmers tend to write global functions. That's true. Yeah. So you yeah you have a nice point there. The style of your program will have to change based on the new features that you get, like namespaces and objects, things like that. The style will have to change, probably. But, uh, but that, that's the thing. The language shouldn't dictate the style. Well, the, the language shouldn't dictate the programmer, I think. So as a programmer, you should know what the computer, the computer should dictate, right? So as a programmer, you should learn what the computer is doing. That's C, that what C is good for, I think. And then when, when you go C++ dictate like the flow of the program and things like that, uh, then you know what the computer is doing, even if you're doing like higher level features. Even if you have to reorganize that. So I think it's worth, and I don't think you're going to, I don't know, uh, unlearn. I think you learn new styles. And you can also program C++ like C if you want to, yeah. Though, People don't recommend that. So this is the menu music. And we want to change that when we go to the gameplay, right? So when we switch to the gameplay mode, which is like here. Yeah, we're going to do um, menu music, volume equals zero. And then we're going to do gameplay. Music volume equals one. Menu music. Yeah, we're allowed to do this stuff. Thanks, guys. Yeah, let's do it like this. I mean, it's never bad to learn new stuff. I just think that we're going to learn one year seeing that when you're supposed to do things better, just change it for two years. Yeah, well, if you know you really want to do C++, like get a job at work in C++, then I, I, I would agree with you. But if you want to learn programming, like how to be a good programmer, I think starting out with a simpler language is better. You, it's easier to understand C than C++, like way easier. C++ is crazy, man. Once you get to like the no features like move semantics and copy constructors and uh, all lots of crazy things like, things like that. You have to think so much when you're just typing code that, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little bit biased. I don't really like C++ that much. Okay, let's see if we get gameplay news. Awesome. But I don't know if you guys could hear that. Let's see. It's not synced perfectly. Well, that was... It was kind of perfect, but it's not perfectly synced. And the reason is, uh, since we are uh, async, right? This is where we increment the playing sound position here. This is not 100% reliable. What did you make the music in? I use uh, Reaper, and I used to use Ableton Live, but uh, because that was what I got, the free version, with my uh, equipment. But uh, I, I want to try it out Reaper, so this was the first one I did in Reaper, and I really liked it, so, yeah. So this is the problem. We can't, uh, if we want them synced, we can't add the position separately. We just start with them, can't simply, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to possibly save a playing sound here, it's going to be sync uh, sync sound okay and when I create the menu music yeah I'm gonna set its sync sound menu music S uh, let's do sync to the gameplay music 
So if we do have a sync sound, let's do a position. Yeah. If we do have a sync sound, our sound position is going to be our sync sound sound position. sound. Well, yeah. Okay. Now let's see. Perfect. Now let's go back to the other. So, but another thing we want to do, we want to fade. A slight fade, but we want to fade. So instead of just setting the volume like this, straight up setting the volume to zero or to one, I'm going to do a target volume system. And uh, the way it works is that uh, I'll have a volume and a target volume. And whenever I get the volume here, well, I'm also going to set target volume to 1 as the default value. But uh, here, volume, yeah. In the end here, I'm going to set the sound volume to be the sound target volume. Maybe I'm going to do that earlier, actually. Oh, but this, hmm. I'm going to do a pre pass because this is actually being run. Yeah, like with hope. This is actually for every sample, so I'm going to pre pass like this. So I'm going to do the sound volume. It's going to be a move towards. I'm going to move the sound volume towards the sound target volume at the speed of, uh, let's say, dt times um, 3. Dude. Yeah. So, OK. In this case, I don't need to do this, because they'll be done, done just once per frame. The sample needs to be done for every sample. This is for every sample. OK. Now, if there's no, if there's no, uh, there's no volume, I could actually skip this whole thing, but I'm not going to skip, well, if there is volume, but I'm not going to skip the position changing. Actually, this is a little bit wrong as well. Because this has to be done every frame, every, every, because this is not reliable. So, well, yeah, I think it'll be reliable enough. Let's, let's test this out. Well, now at the beginning, we have to set both the volume and the target volume. Maybe we can do a helper function to do this, but let's see. That's perfect. Let's go back now and uh, change them back whenever I go to the menu. So menu. I should probably do a call like change game mode. Yeah, that'll be better. So current current game just game mode. Yeah, I'm gonna switch on the game mode. In case we are now at the menu, so game mode equals game mode. In case we are in the menu now. I'm going to do this. Actually, the other way around. 
Okay. And I'm also going to set the let's say this guy's nice. So this will be change game mode to menu. See? It's nice writing you know, the first version of the code quickly, writing a comment like clean up, and then actually do the cleanup. That's really cool. So that's the menu. In case we are a we're going to the gameplay. Oh should we break here, right? In case we are going to the gameplay, uh, we should really Really do like this start the game and then do this change game mode to new game mode. Okay, now in the game, we're also going back to the menu, uh, no, the levels, and I will be test for win condition. We're going to go back to the menu, so change game mode to the menu, and maybe we're going to do a special screen later on. And this one I'm just going to forward declare, I think. Um, or, you know what? Yeah, now I'm just going to follow the comment. Like here. New game mode. And I press, well, second the game mode. Missing semicolon. Okay, let's see. That is really cool. Really, 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 really cool. I don't think we're gonna do more music for the other levels. I'm thinking about 10 levels or something. And uh, one, I don't know, if it gets boring, we can do more music, but okay. Implemented music, we did. Now, sound effects. Make the volume have a target volume. Already did that. Sound effects are going to be a little bit more complicated because there is a bunch of them. Right? So, uh, yeah. Just for reference, let me just put this kind of reference stuff for the sound effects that I created. Uh, okay. Okay, and uh, so these are the sound effects that we want to add. We have bricks, and we have hits. Let's start with the hits, and it's going to be pretty, pretty bad code at first. But we're going, hang on, we're going to do a little bit better later on. But so loaded sound. Let's do loaded sound. Uh, hey. Uh, hit sounds and we have 16 hit sounds and we added a pitch shifting to our engine but the pitch shifting also changes the length of the volume and I don't I didn't want these hits to be really quick but I wanted them to change like pitch a lot so that's why I'm doing different sounds but uh, well yeah let's do a load wave and I'm going to do them by hand. Like, uh, hit sounds equals load wave. Data, sound effects, hit one, second, yeah. Dot wave, two, three, four, five, six, no, let's do five.
Okay. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Well. Wow. Nice. Now let's do this as well. Two, three. Okay. Now, whenever we let's go to the levels. Whenever we destroy block, block destroyed. And uh, if we have neighbors, I don't want to play the sound for everyone, including the neighbors, because that's too chaotic. So, uh, let's see, if we are going to destroy the neighbors, maybe I'm going to play sound and uh, let's do hit sounds with a random int in range. Zero. That's uh, <laughs> going to be pretty pretty long call but open close open 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 close okay play sound yeah we, we should also pass like if it's looping or not yeah let's see if we get some side effects This assert is uh, because we just added three sounds, three playing sounds, and we want to change that because <laughs> that was just for testing, really. Let's make it like 32 sounds, and uh, we weren't sure how to do this thing, like if we wanted to play more sounds, and uh, we thought about just ignoring and asserting. What I think I'm going to do is... I'm going to set the next playing sound. I can't do it like zero because that will override the music. And I could hard code like three, which is like the music plus the uh, movement and stuff. But I'm going to do like a uh, like a playing sound. Let's say uh, immutable sounds. Sound count. Okay, that will cool, I think. Immutable sound count. And uh, yeah, whenever we, we play the initial sounds, the game here, I'm gonna do like immutable sound counts, gonna be the next playing sound. So, whenever we go all the way to the end of the array, I'm gonna set the immutable sound count. Oh, the, the, Next playing, so next playing sound, back to the immutable sound count. And I think that's just it, to be honest. Let's see. Well, we got a wrong sound there. some reason. Oh, because the, the random is inclusive. Yeah. Uh, this random is inclusive, so I should do like minus one. Okay. Oh, and actually this is wrong. Why did I write that? I don't want random sounds. I will want random sounds for like the bricks, but uh, for this guy, I wanna I wanna actually increment this guy. I'm gonna do like next hit sound to play. Yeah. 
actually going to start off with zero. And, uh, and let's also do like uh, last hit sound played. So if the current time minus the last time, let's say it's like half a second. Yeah, I'm going to increment the next hit time, uh, sound to play. If it's not, I'm going to set it back to zero. So the idea is, if you get like crazy, you know, breakout kind of sounds, like this should be just the first one. But the more we get, higher the pitch should be. Yeah, it's not working. Oh. No, yeah, we are using it. Yeah, we should also set this guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I think the collision was weird for a moment here. We should also like do optimized builds when we're doing this kind of stuff. Especially because we haven't profiled our game yet. We are going like <laughs> overboard with that. Like, uh, if next sound to play is less in the array count of uh, hit sounds minus one, then we increment that. Um, sure you do like this. Okay. Let's try the comment. The comment will be a little bit too crazy, maybe. I really like these hit sound effects. Oh, I got a comment. But... Okay, now I got two comments. I think this is awesome already. And just to check out what we're doing. Let's uh, print the one that we're, that we're playing. Just because it's nice to know. Oh, let's do this now. Yeah. I think that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. Awesome. Now let's try playing the brick sounds. I'm gonna do like brick sounds. And these ones I can do like random. And I'm gonna also going to remove this guy, at least for now. Mm -hmm. Let's see how many brick sounds we have. We have five brick sounds. Yeah. 
Um, header was no pointer. Did not call brick. Oh yeah, we don't have six. Yeah, if that wasn't extremely awesome, I don't know what is. That was really cool. Let's try them both at the same time. Let's, I'm not sure if one's going to be too much for the other one. Let's just remove the music. For now, let's see. Uh, what game are we making? We are making a break count kind of game. So let's start with level zero. Let's see. Well, just a small comment. We failed at making this work because uh, let's say the gameplay also zeroes them. Well, let's not zero the music. Let's keep the music playing. Uh, so we start out with a breakout game. Started making more interesting stuff like breakout space invaders. Ah, okay, so that's the kind of game we're making. <laughs> oh, dude, that was that was. I almost, I almost reached that, uh, that force field there. Okay, so in the levels, when we do like play sound for the bricks, let's do like brick. No, let's just call that sound. Let's do sound. Uh, that's the target volume equals half and the volume. We should have like a set volume function. Yeah, let's do like set volume because then it will set both the target and the this guy. Yeah, and we can also do that on the play sound here. So this guy, we do set volume. That'll be in the audio. Okay. That looks cool. Thanks. And the thing is, we are building this game from scratch. So we started out with a blank file and no libraries whatsoever. And uh, if you come here to the YouTube page, which is uh, youtube.com slash danzaydan, you can watch the whole process. Everything was live streamed. And uh, this is episode 13. And we are, we are, I don't know, I'd say halfway done with the game. Maybe a little bit more even. And you can also download the source code on each.io for each day you can download the game and the source code for free 
danzaydan.h.io. Yeah, I think we're getting two cool places. Let's see how this, this sounds. Still too much. Well, I think I'm setting the wrong thing here, sound. Yeah, I am setting the wrong thing. Uh, okay, this guy should be the sound. I am liking that quite a lot, actually. Let's see, we have a ton more sounds, but I think I'm gonna add the difficult one now. Because if we manage to add this one, then we'll be good to go, I think. Just just to test, I'm going to turn the playing sounds maximum, let's say to three. And let's see if we don't crash and we don't uh, cap the music. See, this is perfect, but we don't hear the blocks, which is what we expected. Okay, now, um, the tricky sound that we want to add now is the player movement sound. We want the player to make sounds when it, because we added like animation for like squash and stretching and a, a little bit of a follow through as well. We want to do that with a sound. We tried doing that quickly uh, previously, and that was tricky. We didn't get it to work 100%. But uh, today we have to make it work, so let's, let's work to make it work. Uh, let's see, we have, let's remove the music. Now oh, let's go back to the game. See, that's why I don't like splitting files, I always get them. Wrong. Okay, uh, I'm also going to set the menu music to zero, so we don't hear any music. And we should make a player movement sound. We already sketched that, so we added this thing. So we got you guys are gonna hear the sine wave. Okay, that's a sine wave. The idea is that sound wave is going to change volume and pitch whenever the player moves. That's going to be a, a great effect. I added that effect on the previous game, but I don't know if you guys will be able to hear that. Let me try that. Let me try to show you guys. That has a whoo kind of sound. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do, but, and this is a pretty big but, it's complicated because uh, Pong, the, the, the other game, was controlled with the keyboard, so we had an acceleration that was pretty smooth. For this game, since we use the mouse, it's all over the place, so in one, one frame the delta is like 50, and the other one is like negative 10. And if you play around with that too much in terms of the pitch and the volume, we may have weird results, so we're gonna have to take it easy. Let's do like the player, yeah, this point. Let's do the player audio. So we have player movement sound here. Let's try, first of all, let's try changing the volume. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do the target volume. And just to show what the problem that we had previously, we can't set, well, we wanted to set that to the uh, to the player target DT, DP. I'll set that to the absolute F 
let's say times a small number. That's what we wanted to do. But we can't do that. Dot x. We can't do that directly. Well, which term does an evaluator function? Oh, this. Yeah. Uh, we can't do that because this guy's all over the place. So I'm going to print f32. We, we kind of started doing that previously, but let's take it slowly. And this time, I think we'll be able to do it. Let's see. Okay, because of the target volume, that sounds perfect already. I mean, I think I'm gonna speed up a little bit of this uh, of this audio guy. Like we have the DT times three. Well, we can do that later. But this is perfect. Well, let's do that. Uh, here in the uh, audio, instead of just hard coding three, I'm gonna do like sound, I don't know, fading speed. I'm gonna add a fading speed. And uh, whenever I start, I'm gonna set the fading speed to three. But this guy, I'm going to set the fading speed, let's say, to twice as fast. And I should also, in the beginning, set the uh, set volume of this guy to zero. That's great, but uh, I think this guy's a bit too much. Is, yeah. Let's... Yeah, kind of like that. Let's make it like five. So the the volume is perfect. But let's also change the pitch. We could hard code the pitch. We call it, we call that speed multiplier thing. We could hard code the pitch something like speed multiplier to like three. It's already a lot better. But if you guys Listen to that carefully. Hmm, well, you guys will see problems, right? Because our pitch, uh, let's, we just hacked that pretty much quickly just to get something going on. And uh, yeah, we don't actually blend the guys. So let's see if we're, if we're trying to play like this sound. And, uh, and let's say we play this one, but now we want to play like this one. Instead of like getting this guy, which we can pretty easily get with a lerp, we get either this or this. And then maybe we can get like this one again. So it's kind of problematic. We have to do like a proper blending of, uh, of guys here. So instead of doing the sample like this, uh, let's do it like, let's do it one at a time. So let's first just get the sample, but let's also, we did the same thing. Where did we do that? With uh, rectangles. We're going to calculate the fraction part. Yeah, we did the same thing, which is going to be the sound position 
minus the sample. This now should be how much removes. Like, oh, I closed the paint. No, I didn't. Well, cool, yeah. So it should be like how much we couldn't go because we were clamped. Of the previous guy, let's say, let's say this guy sampled 10, this guy sampled 11, and we were like 10.5 yeah, of the next guy. So we have to blend this guy, this guy, with the next one. Makes sense. So we're going to get two samples. Let's say left, uh, left sample 1 and left sample 2. Left sample 1 is going to be this guy. Left sample 2 is going to be this guy plus the channel count thing minus, minus 1 in case it's a stereo or mono plus 1. So if it's like if it's two sound uh, two channels, we're going to skip one, then add one. If it's one, we're going to skip nothing, then add one. So these are the two samples. The final sample guy is just going to be a lerp between these guys. So lerp between the left sample one with the frac as a value and the left sample two. Okay. And uh, I think that'll be all we need. We have to make sure, though, that we wrap, like, technically, if the sample is, like, the very last sample, we should get the first one. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Let's call that next sample. But uh, if next sample is greater than sound, 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 sample count, Just going to do this. Okay. Yeah, that looks correct. Now I'm going to ignore the right channel for now. Just so we can focus on making it work. I'm gonna turn the volume way down for you guys, as well as for me, just because you never know. That sounded perfect, I think. Let's try doing that for the right channel. Right channel, this one's going to be this guy. Right. The guy upset. Yeah. And then this one is going to be a sample plus two offset by the channel count. Yeah. So same thing here. Oh, you should also, yeah, we are multiplying by the sound volume. We can just multiply this guy by the sound volume. It's like one less thing to do. Yeah, and then, then, well, we're back to normal, I think, let's see.
Okay, I kind of like that. I think the volume's a bit too much. Let's see. Let's do 35. But now let's try changing the pitch based on this guy as well. And uh, I'll comment the sound, the one for now, just so we can. Well, and we should actually set it to something. Right? Just so we can focus specifically on the pitch. Now let's play around with that. So the basic idea is the same thing, same thing. But since we're not blending this guy, we just said it, it may sound a bit weird. So I'm gonna turn my volume a bit down in yours as well. Just so we see what's going on. And actually the pitch, it should just uh, should start like 0.5 plus this guy. And it shouldn't go too high, I think. So maybe this one. And we should really cap these guys in a way. So, yeah, that was really unpleasant. It started out way too bassy, and it ended up way too, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe that was just wrong, I think. Yeah, let's comment this guy and let's see the result of this guy. Let's see like, what we got. This should be like 0.5. Yeah, well, it's just moving a little bit over 0.5. And we got a very weird sound out of that. Let me try to hear that. I'm gonna turn you guys even a little bit down. Let's see. Yeah, this is pretty wrong, I think. Even though we're doing the same thing. Oh, that that's 0.5. Let's try do one plus this guy then. And uh, let's do just uh, player movement sound. Let's see. Hmm. We're getting a weird sound when we move. Maybe our lerp's not 100%. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think the problem. Well, let's just take a print screen out of that. Maybe the problem is because we are all over the place or the lips are not 100%. Yeah, see, this thing right here, that's could probably cause weird behaviors like not 1.0 out of nowhere. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the same thing like of a like a moving towards kind of thing. So yeah. Let's see. Let's see. I wanna I want this guy to be uh, move toward let's see play movement sound this guy and let's move like let's move slowly playing sound to f32 speed multiplier yeah it is better but the, the lerp is wrong. Pretty sure the lerp is wrong. But uh, 
Yeah, that, that was way better. Let, let me just check what we have. Oh, we're not using the next sample. Hmm. This should be like plus one. And then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me try debugging that. Let's go to audio.c, let's see. So we want to play... Oh yeah, now we should turn off the optimized flag. Okay, let's see. Sample is zero, fraction is zero. Hmm. So, next sample is two. That looks correct. Yeah, but this is not correct. This is just the next sample. Uh, no, this is correct. This is correct. But well, let's play around with the sound a bit more. So we got weird behavior, let's see. Sound position is this guy. So I want to blend from 2197 with 2199. And the blend amount is going to be pretty small. So this is the first one, this is the second one. And the result is this guy. That looks perfect. Hmm. I don't know. And then we do the but it's pretty wrong the pitch changing we have a very thin sound playing alongside the other one If I remove the lerp, like, did that go away? No, that does nothing. That's weird. Hmm. I'm starting to think this is really wrong. Yeah, this is. Left sample one, frack, left sample two. This guy times the volume. Then we do like the uh, left and right stuff. Mm. Yeah, we. Oh, okay, this is ha. this is the problem. We were offsetting by the channel count, and now we are not. 
So I'm going to do this in integer like this. But I have to do this after the frac. Yeah. Okay. Ha. Nice one. Okay, let's see. Perfect. Now, let's do a little bit more. Let's say this guy. Maybe do it. This guy a little bit faster. Like point four. Maybe a, even a little bit faster. Maybe we can start a bit base here. And go like a little bit higher pitch. There's a small problem. If I move for a short period really fast, I don't get as high a volume because this guy is just based on the time. And we're going to do something like plus, let's call it this target. Plus the target. I don't know, times this guy. So we also move faster if we are moving faster, but no, there is a certain smooth. Well, yeah, this is the basic idea, but a little bit too much. This sounds not perfect yet but uh maybe this guy can be a little more as well Nice. This is going like way too much now. This would be pretty cool. Maybe even a little bit less. Now it's starting to get some. Perfect. Now it's not a hundred percent yet. Like if we move slowly, it is. But if you move fast, we got a bit of a 15, so we are decrementing, 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 decrementing. Then we move all the way to 5.12, go up, up, down, and up, and up, and up, and up, and, up, and down. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna make this guy like a lot slower and then I'm gonna clamp this guy as well. So I'm gonna clamp for 0 0.7. Let's try 10. Um, Convert it from float to integer. 
Oh, clamp that. Okay. Tends too much, I think. Let's get this guy a little bit down. Eight. Eight as well. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely way better. But I don't think it's a hundred percent yet. Let's try doing like seven. Let's do just that. Let's do a move towards pretty slow. Yeah, when we change this guy, not getting the most clean sound ever, but maybe, maybe the way we're doing, we just won't get the best sound. So, speed multiplier. We're changing the position. And position is in samples. Yeah. Let's see how it sounds together with the both the volume. Because we're pretty close, I think. I can also remove. This is exactly what we want, but it sounds not clear. I mean, if we do like 0 0.1, let's see if that. If we do like point. Let me move this guy. Let's, yeah, let's see. Still not working. Let's go back to the non lerp version just to see. Yeah, it's way worse. Let me just check out if this is still correct. Let's see, if the position is this guy, the sample this guy and the fraction is this guy. Okay, but the sample is not this guy, it's actually twice. 21, 6, 22. The next sample, 21, 6, 24, correct. And uh, yeah, then I'm going to get the samples minus 2144 that's a huge jump I don't know if I like that and then the right one I'm assuming will be 21 uh, 21 6 23 yeah and then 25 Okay. Yeah. 
and let's see these values. Minus 2143, minus 2471. Either we got a, a huge jump or either that's wrong because uh, I don't know I don't know if I like those values let's see like point to this guy let's see like eight of them hmm I think this is correct though. Yeah. This is correct. And the lerp should really these should be pretty close, I think. Mmm. This is wrong. Okay. Oh no, it's not wrong because we're multiplying by the volume, which is pretty small, I suppose. Hmm. That's weird. Let's try doing that without the volume. Let's see. If, um, let's see how wrong is that. Let's see. Well, go back to it a little bit of volume. Yeah, it's still wrong, but it's not as wrong, but it's still wrong. And, uh, I know, it's almost awesome. If we weren't for that artifact. Let's just try, just for the fun of it, let's try playing with everything back on. Let's remove this guy. It's gonna be really cool, man. I'll turn the volume up for you guys. Dude, that's really cool. What do you guys think? It sounds awesome. I mean, we can still hear like the back, the artifact. But if you can't fix that, it won't be like the end of the game. Still worth adding that in. I think I'm going to leave that how it is now. Add a couple more sound effects. Then maybe next time you can fix that 
or not. I'm gonna play that with different, like with speakers and things like that. Just to see if it sounds okay or not. Yeah, in the menu you can hear that pretty clear. The gameplay you can't. So I'm gonna put like a huge to do, like. Let's do like fix uh, player movement noisy glitch. But I'm gonna keep it like that. Let's do a couple more sound effects. Let's see. We have let me go over here and break out. We have a couple of cool ones. Have the force field. It's pretty easy to add. Let's add that. So we have the player movement sound. Let's add the player force field. Let's do like force field sound. And then here we do the loaded force field. Down. Okay, then let's do player. Uh, let's do force field sound equals play sound of loaded force field sound, and let's go into loop. But I'm also going to set the volume. Zero. Um, yeah, okay, this is gonna be a pointer. And I'm also going to load the force field like force. And I believe it's just called force field. <laughs> what is that? Okay, now uh, in the invincibility, I may just set that. Let's see, do we have the alpha? Yeah. The alpha is less than one. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I may just do like set volume of a force field sound to the invincibility alpha, and I could probably print that. And I'm also going to remove that uh, that other print. This guy. Let's see. Okay. Why is it two point five? Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I don't know why the alpha isn't one. If the alpha is less, if it's more than zero, I remove that. Oh, but only if the invincibility t is not greater than zero. Let me try debug that. Uh, where is that? Line 542. Okay, the visibility is negative in the alpha. Well, Yeah, I suppose it, I suggest clamp. Yeah. I suggest clamp the, the fog. Like. Okay. Now. You know what? I should really do this calmly, the, the sound the implementation, and I'm getting tired. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna call that a day now. We've been doing this for like 3 hours and 20 minutes. And next time around, we implement all of the sound effects, fix the player noise glitch, and possibly doing like the UI, start doing the UI stuff. Pretty pretty sure gonna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna call that a day for today. We did a lot of stuff, we fixed bugs, we improved the sound system a lot, we added the menu, which looks awesome, I think. We implemented the safe system. I almost forgot about the safe system. We implemented the safe system. Good job, yeah. I think we did, today was a great stream. Sound effects do make a lot of difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. Those whooshes sound really awesome. I mean, if you do get a bit of noise, I don't think it's such a problem because I don't know, arcade games have noisy sounds anyway. But I definitely think we should fix that. Okay, so if you want to watch, in case you missed like some of the live streams, you can watch all of them on YouTube. And in fact, I have created, I have added together the best moments of a of the first two, like you can watch the first one highlights and the second highlights as well. In case you don't want to stand for like two hours and watch the whole thing, but you can also like speed it up. And uh, yeah, and you get to like the best moments. This th These videos are full of content, these highlights. But uh, you can watch the whole stream as well. So by watching the whole stream, you'll see the whole process. the whole, Every line of code, every decision I took, every thing the chat, commented and we tried out and uh, some of the gameplay things we experimented and didn't like as well as uh, some of the major successes and major failures that we had along the way so pretty cool and you can also download the game on each IO you can download every game and the source code every episode and its source code here and when you click download now you can uh, you're welcome to give me a tip if you want but you can just click uh, no thanks and take me to the download and then you can download it for free so yeah so thank you guys for watching. I had a lot of fun today. We did a lot, and this part, this part of the game where we start getting a little more uh, 
interesting looking like adding a menu, adding music. And it's a very simple menu still. But just by adding things like that and adding music and uh, sound effects and save games. You know, it really starts to look like we have a... We start looking to see the end of the game. And uh, I'm really excited to finish this project. I hope you are too. And uh, so if you are, be sure to follow me on all the normal platforms. And uh, next time we can do and maybe a little more progress together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.